there a chart type that is equally hated and loved as much as the pie chart? I don't think so. People love the pie chart because it sums to 100% and it's familiar and it's easy to read. And there's a whole swath of people who hate the pie chart because it doesn't allow us to accurately see the data. Well, on today's episode of the One Chart at a Time video series, Robert Cressara from Tableau Research is gonna help us understand when to use it and when not to use the pie chart. Thank you, John, for inviting me to talk about pie charts. I feel like I'm being stereotyped here a little bit, maybe because I'm one of the few people who have actually done some research on pie charts, but okay, let's talk about pie charts. Everybody knows what a pie chart is, and unfortunately that means that many people think they understand how they work and how to use them. But that is often not the case. Pie charts have a very specific use, and you need to know what that is when you use them. People also like to make fun of bad pie charts, and that's fairly easy to do. You don't have to look very hard to find pie charts with dozens of slices, or bad use of 3D, or, and that's perhaps the worst, a total misunderstanding of what a pie chart is. So let's stick with this example. This is a sort of famous pie chart made by Fox News in 2012 about a poll where they asked people whom they would vote for in the Republican primaries. The numbers on this chart, if you haven't done the math already, add up to 133%. That makes no sense. And that is why the use of the pie chart is wrong here. A pie chart breaks down the whole into its parts, and those parts can't overlap. And that is important. The problem with this chart is that people were able to give more than one answer. And so you don't get a clean breakdown of the total number of responses into the candidates. The slices overlap. You can't do that with a pie chart. Another thing is 3D. Now, too much is made of this in my humble opinion, but 3D pies get people riled up pretty quickly. The reason is that a 3D perspective distorts the shape and makes the slice pointing towards the viewer appear larger and the one in the back appear smaller. How strong the defect actually is, is debatable, and we do live in a 3D world. And just because there are more pixels with the color of the front slice than there should be relative to its value, doesn't mean that people necessarily misread them as much as you'd expect just from that. We're a little bit more capable than that. But it is a concern. And you should just avoid 3D when making charts because it just introduces a lot of complications and is usually just empty bling anyway. And then there are the charts that have just way too many slices. I mean, just, just look at it. <laughs> this is a chart of the populations of the states and territories of the United States. That makes for 56 slices, and many of them are tiny. Whoever made this chart, which I found on Wikipedia, by the way, realized that there were too many slices because they somehow grouped together the last dozen or so because they couldn't fit the labels. And yet, they still thought it made sense to include all those pie slices. The thing about charts is that they have a function. Bar charts let you compare very directly and very easily. Line charts let you see how quickly values change over time. And pie charts are good for part to whole comparisons. That means they show you how much each division of a company contributes to total sales, or which product resulted in the most complaints or whatever. They're not good for comparing between the slices, however. An alternative that works a little bit like a pie chart is a tree map. Though the studies I've seen comparing them have not really found tree maps to be any more accurate or like better than pie charts, but they might be more acceptable for people who are violently opposed to pie charts. So to sum up, use pie charts when they make sense. When you're comparing parts to a whole, when the categories in the slices don't overlap, and when there aren't too many slices. Now, how many is too many? There is no strict rule, but I'd say no more than eight, maybe 10. Anything beyond a dozen is almost certainly too many. When used correctly, for the right purpose, pie charts can be very useful. Don't let the haters convince you otherwise. And with that, back to you, John. And thanks to Robert for that great introduction to pie charts. I'm sure you know how to read and probably even create pie charts, but now maybe you have a little bit more understanding of the pros and the cons and when and when not to use the pie chart. So until next time, this has been the One Chart at a Time video series. Thanks for watching.